here at the end. It doesn't stop until it stops spinning. We're, We're live. Wow. Uh, welcome to hey. Unlisted Goose, number 75. Uh -huh. Honk, honk, honk. Honk, honk. Nice. That, that has multiple meanings right now. <laughs> yeah. Who, who, who knew just being geese would get us on terrorist watch lists? All right. Get rid of oh that. It's, gosh, right? it's hot now. Uh yeah, okay. Uh, everybody was super busy all last week running around doing their thing, actually putting on workshops and events for everybody in the community. And uh, so I thought that would be a great topic for the week. Um, so why don't we start maybe with, uh, uh, yeah, okay, we'll go across the top row in order. We'll go Nicole, then Jack, then John. Why don't you give us after actions, tell us like, things about your workshop that are different like uh, what's like a really unusual thing that you did or what's a the the most interesting connection you saw form some different kind of stuff after actions nicole go okay so i i just got done with self reliance festival that's selfreliancefestival.com and we did a a two day event at the special operations equipment compound in camden tennessee we had more than 250, maybe 300 people there, nice. which was awesome. And there were vendors and there were keynote sessions and there were demos. We were demoing how to distill fuel. There was a soap making <coughs> demo, a knitting demo. So the idea is come here and learn how to do stuff. We did a lot of emergency medical and a couple of things that were really different about this event. One, there were three giraffes in the house. <laughs> Now they were stuffed, but John Willis has a collection of things of uh, you know different stuffed animals, and the giraffes were watching over the whole thing. We also did a session on race racism, which is not something you usually talk about in the Liberty World, but that session changed people's approach to the entire fight that keeps happen be happening between racist, not racist, black, white police, BLM, like all of that. It was a great thing to see that discussion happen in a way that was positive and forward looking. And, and that was a little different than most. Our next one is June 11th. Okay, hold on. That was way too interesting for me to pass up. Did you guys come up with as a group of people, any interesting like ways forward? Okay, so the presenter was Kevin, a man named Kevin Dixie. And and he said, you know, and he's basically a black man in a room with mostly white people at a self-reliance festival. He said, if I can come to a room full of people like this and I can be honest and open, if anything I say makes you feel defensive, you need to think about why. Right. And he set this foundation of let's talk about this. And his point was they're using racism as a tool to pit black against white on purpose to control us. Right. And so what we need to do is understand that that's happening and then not just automatically emotionally respond <laughs> to like the Juneteenth thing, right? Understand what's behind Juneteenth, why it might be important to somebody. And then if you're just going to go ridicule it, you're part of the problem because you're reacting the way they expect you to. So it, it was that kind of discussion and it was a really powerful talk. Cool. I didn't mean to derail you. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. It was, it, it was, you know, it wasn't the way we get sessions is people apply and they fill out forms. And then we don't know exactly what will be the content until about four weeks before the event. And so anything can happen at this one. Wow. Awesome. Where, for we, a little where were you going? City of topics. Yeah. I don't know. That, I mean, that was it. That was what was different. I think it's Jack's yeah. turn to talk about his because he gave a badass speech from what I understand. I caught. Yeah, it was a good speech, and it's the entire reason we we you know it was. If I say I so there, myself, I saw it. It was, it was good. good. <laughs> um, so I was asked to speak at Anarchapoco this year, and it's why I wasn't up hanging out with John and Nicole. Um, it turned out it was like the same weekend, basically, or the same week, and. They wanted me to come down there, and then I'm like, well, this is my speaker's fee. These are all my terms, and I, I, I didn't want to say no, so I threw out, like, all the stuff I wanted, and then they said yes, and then I was like, well, shit, I really can't go. 
And they said yes to everything. So it was like, uh, guys, I've checked with my caretaker and I can't have him here to take care of my property. I, I, I can't come down there. I'm really sorry. They said, well, you can do it remotely. And I was like, I don't want to present straight on for 40 minutes to a crowd that big sitting where I am right now in my chair. So I decided to put together a workshop. And we never really did one like this before. So we streamed in Anarchapoco. And then we watched other things. And then we did some ad hoc presentations. I did a presentation uh, on my one of my aquatic systems. We had uh, Joe Riles present on uh, uh, protection dogs. We had a presentation on uh, 3D printers and a few other things. And when we were not really enthralled with some of the presenters that were on uh, for Anacapoco, we watched uh, Jeff Lawton's Urban Permaculture. And it was kind of cool because usually at an event, I'm the proverbial one-legged man in the ass-kicking contest. Like you're just <laughs> running, 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 running. You're trying to get all your presenters on. And like it was like taking a vacation where you have no agenda and you just kind of drive around and see cool stuff and hung out with people. And usually we have about 90 people here with staff and all. So we had like 25 so it was very intimate. We had our new 100-inch screen projection screen up, and we were watching stuff and hanging out, playing pool, playing darts. And it was more like a hangout. I mean, I have groups of family over that are that big. Uh, but they were here for two and a half days versus the normal three and a half. And it was really awesome. And we did uh, – we took the food up. Like, to, I, I couldn't do what we did with, with, a, with a typical workshop with, like, 90 people in it. We did like uh, one day for breakfast, we did steak and eggs and Bloody Marys. Nice. Wow. And another day we did like you take the traditional Scottish breakfast, if you're familiar with that, with the, the bangers and the mash and the uh, black pudding and the white pudding and the, the you know proper bacon rashers. And we did like this thick, amazing uh, pork belly that I made. Everybody got like mm. a slab of pork belly, the chili pepper bacon. And instead of black pudding, uh, which I have nothing against it, but you know, it is what it is. If you know what it is, it's a blood sausage. We did uh, brisket burnt ends hmm. to stand in for the black. Like that was the kind of stuff we did. Uh, nice. It was just an amazing event. And we had some really great stuff. And when we did the uh, barter blanket, I thought with that few people, it might not be as cool. It was really freaking cool guys. We did it. We did it in the garage. Cause it was like 28 degrees out. <laughs> And we just threw a blanket over one of the uh, tabletops. I got another gun. I always, you know, tend to end up with guns on the barter blanket. And Dorothy's getting a puppy. Oh, we're getting a Joel Riles uh, Fortress K9 puppy. Not a protection oh, cool. dog trained, but like one of his dogs was like, "You're a great dog, but you're not going to make it as a protection dog." So uh, Dorothy's looking up uh, girl girl German Shepherd dog names, and it was just really cool and totally different than anything else we ever did here before. Sounds amazing. I can't wait to meet your puppy. And the fact yeah. that you were happy with it, I think that's probably what made it even more amazing for the people there. And she's thinking about naming the puppy Jetta, which is ironic because it has nothing to do with, with the Jetta Volkswagen that I started my show in at all. It's actually a um, it's a Danish name that means that means jet black. And then we'll call her Jet for short because well. A dog out of that breeding stock, you know she's going to be fast. So, mm -hmm. a permaculture name. It'll be a double entendre, maybe a triple, like you said, permaculture too. <laughs> Mr. Is the dog Bush. black. Mm -hmm. He said from the line that we'll be getting the pup from, it will. He'll probably have a few with a little bit of tan on them, but most of them are going to be solid black. Oh, sounds pretty racist. <laughs> racist <laughs> dog. Sorry. <laughs> dogs are racist if they're the wrong color. Emojis are racist if you use the wrong shade. Uh, it's got to be the exact shade. That. My fiance was racist against black uh, Pomeranians for a while until we found oh, one. She's like, I don't know if I want to get it. I just want to get a blonde one. I don't know about black ones. And I was like, you're a freaking <laughs> dog racist. So, hold on. Like, when I got my first Britney Spaniel, it was a liver and white one, and I really wanted a liver and white one. There's only two options. There's liver and white and orange and white. I didn't want an orange and white one. But I didn't want the orange and white because they have longer hair. And when you hunt with them, all the stuff gets tangled in their fur. And then you have to comb it out. And that sucks. Is that racist? Everything's racist. Oh, Everything. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I accept it. I'm, I'm Britney Spaniel racist. Hey, I want to shout out 30 Day Reviews. Justin, thanks for always reminding people to hit that like and the bell button on Dang. these things. Because that helps bring more people in. 
Thanks, They're man. He's, around. he's just like trolling all our channels that we're streaming on and saying, hit that like and bell button. All right. Wow. Can we hit the like on our own one? <laughs> yeah, that's go. right. Like he's going to Jack's channel. He'll probably be at your channel next, John. There we oh, go. Didn't, uh, didn't they do away with the dislike? <laughs> Everyone's too soft now to get a dislike on their thing. I don't know. I still have thumbs down on my dashboard. Supposedly, as a creator, you can see your dislikes, but I can't figure out how to do it. It really makes me sad. Oh, I missed my dislikes. Yeah, dislikes made me dislikes. happy. Yeah, when that's I was like, you're not passive aggressive like I am. <laughs> you know, when you get like 137 likes and yeah. seven dislikes, you're like, oh, I made it. I made it. I have hurt your feelings. I feel good about myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what we, we forgot to do is we're going through like our recent events. We didn't tell people what we're drinking, and that seems oh, wrong. Yeah. I actually made a real uh, frothy milky whippy drink today with uh, um, agave. Yeah, yeah, agave, great sweetener. Doesn't fuck up good coffee. Yeah, it fucks up margaritas though. Yeah, yeah, you need to out of the margaritas. I have a martini in the wrong shape glass. Oh, I think she just means she has a shot of vodka in a glass. <laughs> I, I added olives, Jack. <laughs> okay, now, now it's okay. Now it's okay. A real olive right here. Gin, or it's not a martini. <laughs> oh man, I'm drinking. Oh, we had a martini bar at my my thing too. We did a martini bar one night, and then we did a um, we did a margarita bar another night. We did Bloody Marys with the steak breakfast, and we did tequila sunrises with the uh, the uh, Texas version of the Scottish breakfast. Nice. We'll see out all the version of that for my work. Sounds like a good time was had by oh, all. Oh, badass. All right, what kind of Kratom? Uh, Super Green Dragon, Brave Botanicals, mybravebotanicals.com. <laughs> Keeping it rocking. I'm drinking electrolyte water right now. That's what I'm doing. There you go. Feeling a little better. Yeah. Brando, Brando. All right. See, I'm so. being all good. I got my uh, sorbil cu cucumber melon uh, seltzer water. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. Not say there's not like a really large shot glass full of vodka in there. So. <laughs> um, I'll share so about the events we just vodka, did. So it's at the it's the height of vodka. It's called we um a couple weeks ago we hosted the Greater Reset Three, the Greater Reset Integration. It was five days. It was really cool because we simulcasted it from Morelia, Mexico. Uh, Derek Rose and Ramiro hosted that. And then we hosted an uh, in-person event here in Central Texas. And then, of course, it was virtual. We had a ton of speakers in person this time, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of people were down in Mexico. There was about 80 or so people that attended in Central Texas. Our venue could only fit 90 or 100 and then in Mexico, there was like 250 people, which I thought was pretty cool. And a lot of the folks in Mexico were international from all over the world because Mexico doesn't have a vaccine requirement to fly in, which is pretty sweet. Uh, the folks in Central Texas were from, were from all over the country. Wasn't as uh, uh, broad as a crowd in Texas, but we did have 52,000 people come to our website during the stream, which I thought was really freaking cool. That's a lot of people. And it turns out, because we self-hosted, well, there's an awesome company called InnoScale that did the hosting for the website. I just want to shout them out, InnoScale.net. They hosted, because we used this PeerTube app, because we didn't want to use Vimeo or YouTube. And so we had a self-hosted live stream that 52,000 people hit, and it cost $13,000 just to run the stream with that many people, which I thought was pretty wild. So the event was a great hit. Uh, there was a lot of people that were super motivated and inspired and it's just really cool to to be pushing this message because this whole exit and build thing and this whole wavelength that we're all on with the podcast and all of our individual work, I think it's really, really resonating with people because people are kind of feeling disillusioned and lost. And uh, it's really becoming super, super evident and clear that there is a dastardly agenda afoot. And of course, it's, it's becoming more clear that it's this World Economic Forum that's really spearheading a lot of the technocracy and tyranny that we're seeing and they have a really strong foothold in canada i think that's one of the big roots why there was such an uprising there but uh it's really cool to to be promoting what i see as the most viable alternative to that um and then i wanted to ride the momentum of the event and do a workshop afterwards so after the event i did a free webinar 
that was super cool. And there was a bunch of people that attended that and then it followed it up with a paid workshop, uh, Exit and Build Life Design. But I think I kind of overdid it because towards the end of the first day, I like blew out my voice, which I never really do. But I was feeling under the weather after the Great Reset, the Greater Reset. I actually, we give a money back guarantee with all the stuff that I do. And there was actually a couple that was like, we're health practitioners and we were not happy with how you treated yourself and your body. You, you, as a leader, you need to be more focused on self-care. And it's like, what the hell? Oh Give me gosh. a break. I'm alive. I'm here today. I don't know if the people are aware of what's going on in the world. But anyway, that kind of stuck out. So Run what you brown. It was cool. A lot you should have pulled from AOC of, uh, and said, I'm going to take some time to find out what self-care even is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my so God. Self care is starting the wood stove world. when it's cold in your house. There you go. Self care is telling people to know you to fuck off. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the epitome of self care. <laughs> exactly. Jack, my you know you can, be, a lot of work. you can be polite and just say no, thank you. No, I can't. I tried it. It didn't work. They keep talking when you do it that way. <laughs> oh, you don't just walk away. Oh, I walk away. Then they follow you. Yeah. I want to tell you why you're wrong for saying you agreed and just walking away because I know you did. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh. Well, so what are we talking about? Events and festivals. Neethi, you doing any events or festivals this year? Let me just tell y'all this is, I think, my first episode back this year. Maybe it's the second one. Is it the first or the second one? I was supposed to be with you up at SOE. But I was being radiation poisoned over here. Uh oh. But we can't really talk about that. So, you know, I'm just going to say people think, I think it's interesting though. I think you might find it fascinating, folks, that did you know that EMF pollution causes dehydration and that dehydration can result in several things that are really, really close to some other thing that you might think that you have that is a patho pathogenic thing. Like you might have a loss of smell or a loss of taste, or you might even have um, pulmonary issues. Did you know? Hmm. Did you know that happens as a side effect of dehydration and loss of electrolytes? I don't know if y'all know this or not, but, but are you doing events this year? I am. I'm going to do them. I'm just, I just have to What are you going to do? We're, well, we are talking about doing um, a food church event or a few, but we, we're going to start this fall with food church event local because oh. we're building, because we're building all the infrastructure on, on the farm. And as it. soon as you pick a date, you're going to find out everyone else has a festival or a thing the same day. If only there was a website that has all the dates. <laughs> Oh, I know. It is, I want to. I want to go ahead and there announce is. the dates, but I don't want to. Let me see. There it is. There, there she is. Free range events, right there. Sorry, Haley. Free I'm range just... events, man. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, if you're having an event, you can go self register. Um, I think she took Squatch Fest off because I made it private. Um, but it oh. should still be on there. I have to go re-register it. It uh, it's not. Is I'm just she? not. Feeling I'm not selling yeah. tickets. Uh, it is, uh, you're either a member of my coffee club to come to Squatch Fest, or all you have to do is just ask me. Be a human, not be a fed. <laughs> or be a friendly fed. I don't know. So, Jack, Haley from your workshop, she was the lady at your workshop who did, like, the Unloose the Goose mugs. Yeah. She set up a website to, to just filter all of these events that are going on into one thing so that we can start getting a better view of all the freedom events. That wow. cool. nice. yeah, you can see that. everybody's it's called free range events and it's definitely worth checking out definitely worth cross promoting if you're if you have an event like self-reliance festival we can we can add a lot of people it makes sense to yeah. put it there yeah it, it was definitely gold. all coordinate at least a little bit mm -hmm. anyway regionally right uh and then okay so i finally talked my better half into uh allowing uh you know we've we built this whole thing to like all the aquaponics stuff, all the cool, you know, the whole permaculture thing, all the hoogles and the, all the edible tree, everything to show off and to teach people, right. To show the show, but I haven't had an event or had anybody over. It's been too long. So 
I created a little space to keep people out of her hair, which I think was the biggest thing. So now I got thumbs up. So April 1st, 2nd, 3rd on my Food Forest Farms website. Tickets are already up there. If you remember the club, you get half off. So if you grab the actual Airbnb, which is the VIP package, because you get the Airbnb suite for the whole weekend, two people can stay in there. So if you get the VIP ticket half off and stick two people in there, you're getting it for 125 bucks. Two nights, three uh, days. Come help me build a thermal mass heater. We're going to barbecue one cool. night. Second night, we're going to do a calzone bar. And she's going to do like homemade uh, spaghetti and meatballs from the grass-fed beef we get from the dude in Idaho that raises it with his daughters. Uh, so why do, you guys, Go ahead. why do you guys think in, that import in-person events are so important? Like, what do we get out of that? Connection. Networking. Viruses. We spread viruses and germs, which is actually good. That's called the immunity. Energy. Yeah. yeah. Spread freedom viruses. Yeah. Freedom freedom virus. Energy, like off of the people, the the conversations. My goodness. Yeah, the networking. A lot of people don't even attend the talks and stuff. They're just in it for the connection and the networking and the plotting and strategizing. I've noticed. It's yes. always good to uh, allocate time for people to just connect, like not just lunch. That's one thing I'm learning because I, I need to always learn like a lot of people can't go seven hours straight like I usually do or something. People need breaks <laughs> here and there. And then it's really good to have time for, for networking and connecting. That's kind of what... oh, go, Nadie, go. I was just saying it's really hard, I think, at a lot of events that because people don't make enough time for that. And I think that... Um, it, I mean, but but if you're having a good time at any of these things, there's never enough time. So. Okay. Now, do you guys know why I put, so I put workshops and festivals together in one topic because basically mm -hmm. you can go to a workshop or a festival with different intentions. Right? Like to, to go consume all the events, right? Or like go consume all the info or go consume all the music or... You know, when I was younger, go chase tail or like, <laughs> hey, I'm going hey, to this people music are festival. trying to find, they are Damn. trying to get, find somebody to have a relationship with that's like minded. So it is important. I would say, they're not trying to get laid like Brian. Well, well I, I said years ago, that was a long time ago, but uh, years ago, like, like 2018. Like, you know, what, if you go to a festival, that wasn't that long ago, say, it was pre COVID, say, man. Yeah, but if we go in with an intent, like I'm going to meet the band, odds are you're going to end up partying with the band by the end I'm of the gonna night. I'm going to meet the groupies. <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever your intention is, it will happen. So have one as opposed to not. That's all I'm saying. See what we got up on the screen right now? This is what I think the most important thing is. The yeah. joy of hanging out with like-minded humans. I said during my talk that when we do these events, we have like a get off my freaking property time at yeah. the end of it, like to put our lives back together. And I'm always a little bit pensive about pushing people out of the gate because I know what's going on. People get together and they're like, holy shit, I'm not crazy. I'm not nuts. There are other, <laughs> yeah. other people that think like I do and they don't want to go home. It's yeah. like, it's Sunday morning, it's 1030, it's time to go home. <laughs> and they're like a little group crowded around the gate, you know? And it's like, you got to like Closing leave. the gate. Y'all can go to the coffee shop. It's right down the road or whatever, oh, you know? Man. Go to the pizza place. You know, they open The funniest house. thing about Squatch Fest, right? It's my property out of the peninsula. So I like literally pack my shit up, get in the car, and drive away. And they're still all talking. And they're like, five <laughs> the gang. It's Sunday. I went home. <laughs> That's why the intentional community thing, I think, is pretty cool because it's like you live at the festival, basically. As long as you have cool people that you live with, you can have that experience all the time. But you, that's why we, we do like a hybrid thing where you have your private property here. Well, we advocate for a hybrid thing and we're going to do a hybrid thing, but you have your private property here and then you have the communal space or there's overlap because, you know, I can do the festival thing, but I can't do the festival thing for two or three weeks straight. I just, people start to kind of get a little annoying. See, I think, I think any of those eco villages, it's going to end up in knife fights. That's why, that's why we're going with short term rentals and Dang, hip camping. Chasing tail and knife <laughs> fights. This guy's going nuts today. If you oh, listen to, if you listen to Paul Wheaton, I've listened to every episode he's ever done. And he is, he has, 
that's just been his study on the side of permaculture is intentional community moved to different ones experienced different governments and management styles um and it, it's it's nearly impossible to not come to he yeah. did do a presentation in 2014 that was called "How to Have a, a, an Intentional Community Without Knife Fights." Yeah. That was it, it, like he was a keynote speaker at Permaculture Voices, and that was the title of his speech. He did a pretty good job with it too. Is he in the U.S.? Yeah, he's uh, in Montana. He's in Montana. That's what I wanted to talk about too. Um, Montana, you've got enough yeah. time. But he's so big, you have to. Buy, and I'm, this is not a fat joke. This is like the guy's literally. Is fucking Paul Bunyan. You have yeah, to, if you're gonna if you're gonna pay for him to come down, you got to buy him two plane tickets. Wow, he's a but, big man then. Wow. He's, he's a saying. big man. He makes me look like a little man. So his like his like Frodo. Is, <laughs> like uh, permies.com. So permies.com. I need the t-shirt with Jack as Frodo. Who's designing that? There is a picture somewhere of Paul oh, next God. to me, and I'm literally like up to like his like rib cage. Wow. He's a little bit elevated. You can't tell, so it makes it worse. But he's just freaking huge. So he's got an appropriate technology class that butts up against a, a permaculture design class in the middle of a Montana summer. So you get to go out and learn how to build rocket mass heaters that will like melt glass for making tiles. Right. And they like build the structures. And he lets you I hope play. I have a permit them. for that. Uh, when you want to, <laughs> where you in the middle of the world, you can do what you want. I so better you get have a permit. Sideways. It's not going to be so, safe without a permit. Workshops. Come that on. is permissions. one. <laughs> yeah, no permissions. I got a festival so is, to promote. It is kind of interesting how you meet like minded people, you have shared visions, and you really want to hang out and talk. I've always wondered why with some of these events that happen time after time after time after time, there's no after event organized by somebody totally different so that you can push the people out the gate and they can go to the, to the after party. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Well, a lot, party, of the like places that, a lot of the places that we're having our events are so remote that there's nowhere even a little bit close that you can go Pork Fest has party. events. Pork Fest has a pre-event. So Ian Freeman of Free Talk Live, he Pork actually got Freeman. banned from Pork Fest. The Free State Project organizers, because it's like a nonprofit, 501c3, and they're like trying to move people there. And then they or, they organize Liberty Forum. Jack's spoken at that before. And then Pork Fest. And uh, I think, you know, some years the board of directors was a little bit more, uh, I don't know, like a nanny state kind of deal. And Ian Freeman made this, these comments about age of consent. And he was kind of blurring the line of how that should work and this, that, and the other. And because of that, also it's because he's controversial and keeps getting investigated by the FBI and stuff. They banned him from Porkfest, which was an event that he was like a staple at completely. So they started Forkfest. Uh, that was like the week before. So you have Forkfest at the <laughs> venue the week before, and then you have Porkfest. And then you have like, I don't know what it is, this pirate thing or whatever. So it went from like a week long thing into three or four weeks of just a bunch of loony libertarians hanging out at the campsite, which is pretty cool. That's a great yeah. event, by the way. I'm I'm gonna be that's, a strategy, though. that's a strategy like p packing onto another event and like doing something with it. They did the Bitcoin festival in my, or whatever it was called. Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. The shitcoin one. Yeah. So like in Miami and like <laughs> they, they pushed nobody was allowed there. To talk about any coin but Bitcoin. Yeah. Even if you were a brokerage the that did like trading, you had to only talk about Bitcoin or only have Bitcoin at your table or booth. So somebody got the idea we're going to do shitcoin 2022, 2021. <laughs> and they did it like at a venue right down the street and they got huge numbers of people. It was more of a trade show, but they still like they, they kind of like piggybacked on it. You know? I love it. We did an after party here one time for one of the, um, I remember what it's called, self reliance something that uh, Ron, whoever his name was, did. And uh, Ron Swanson? No, no, he's not that cool. Any, uh -oh. What happened? We lost John. Whoa. Okay, anyway, um, I had some issues with the guy because he was trying to use video of me in ways without my approval. So I stopped Dang. doing it. And they did one here, and he's like, Are you going to come? I'm like, No, I'm not going to come. <laughs> but you remember last time when I said no? <laughs> like, like, I don't trust you anymore. But don't then like a bunch of people me? reached out to me that were part of it. I'm like, 
hey man, we don't we want you to come. We want to like maybe do an after party or something. I'm like, well, do it at my house. <laughs> so we had an after party for that here, and that was pretty cool. Nice. Um, we ended up with all kinds of people. We ended up with one of the guys from uh, Naked and Afraid from that show, and like one of the guys from Alone. We ended up with him here, and uh, we've had things like that go on. Different one, but same event. We ended up with Brad Thor, the author that does like all the spy novels with uh, Scott Har- Scott Harvath here. So you can like tie into other things that are going on. Those yeah. were like one night events. Like people came and hung out, and the after party at that one. And like some guy asked me if I wanted to go. They're like. We're all going to strip club, man. You want to go? I'm like, you know, my <laughs> wife's standing next to me. <laughs> Bring her too. Right? Portland, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was actually the response. Like, no, we're not into that, man. You guys go have a good time. So they went and had the after after party at the strip club, which I don't even know where they went. They had to drive like from oh, here the after after party. That's after after party, right? We were after the after party, party and we're like trouble. midnight. Get out! Like you got to go. And that's where they went, but I don't that's like Brian's said, scene there. It's yeah, it's uh, it's thing. Nicole's whole comment for the year about like building networks, right? So that's why I wanted to merge the two topics. When you're at these events and you're in live with real humans and watching them interact in real, real life, strippers. you get to like make these other groups of sub things that you have in common that you'll only know. If you take the time to go somewhere and hang out, because you'll never ask the right question on a screen because you won't see their kid next to them or see what they're driving or see what they have on their feet, whatever. You yeah. got to do it live. You got to be around people. So you got to go, especially if you're to new to this world, because like there's a lot of folks that COVID, COVID, oh. like 9 11 and like oh. the bailouts really woke a lot of people up. I think it was one of those situations where they, they overplayed their hand. And for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And now we have people rising up all over the world. And so if somebody kind of just, quote unquote, woke up uh, and you're just been really diving deep on the Internet and kind of turning your family off because you annoyed the piss out of them and family, <laughs> and stuff, yeah. which I think happens often, um, it's it can be really be liberating and, and fulfilling. And, and someone mentioned earlier, like, you don't feel like you're the lone crazy because you're around a lot of people that think like we do. And there's more of us out there than people realize. I've been pounding on that for a while. Like they, the, the media wants it to seem as though we're this fringe thing, right? Even Trudeau was like a fringe movement. And then it turns into a state of emergency. Really, yeah. There's millions like, of people I out there. You, I mean, you, you it was a fringe that. state of emergency. Yeah. You said the perfect thing, John, right? Like, like there's so many people waking up right now. There's all kinds of people, yeah. different yeah. kinds of people. Different so reasons. just because we kind of all look the same, don't, well, hopefully I'm trying That's to racist. for the long hairs. <laughs> no, just different kinds, man. There's all kinds of people that we, so just because we need, we need a younger, not, you know, we, we need somebody else on here who's like, anyway expand circles that's why you go to live events who do you have like a yeah. little bit of connections with right because the group's got to interconnect that's the part multiple generations too yes, yeah i mean i saw somebody in the yes. comments saying they're in middle tennessee and i don't know them <gasps> I thought I'm you knew everybody in the whole i have state. an entire like super awesome network like why are we not networked well we will be yes GSD. But the more you get out and see things, I think the more you find those people. We're always amazed at getting people together at something like one of Jack's events or Self Reliance Festival or John's Exit and Build Conference. And you're like, where are you from? And you have somebody from, you know, Podink, Milwaukee, Oregon, right? Milwaukee, <laughs> Oregon. And there's somebody across the room like, I live in Newburgh. That's right next to it. And yeah. they. They went across the country to meet each other. Yeah. And they live 20 that. minutes apart. It's amazing. We had a Freedom Cell meeting oh, cool. recently in uh, Bastrop County, which is the smaller county that I live in. And there was like 60 people. We organized it in five days. And we were kind of riding the momentum after the greater reset because there's a bunch of people from in town. And I met two different people that live on my rural farm to market street. They're both literally within two or three minutes <laughs> a uh, walking distance, uh, like right down the road for me. So I thought that was pretty cool. It just goes to show like we're literally everywhere. In fact, I don't know, maybe we're like 10% of the population now, people that maybe 5%. It's a lot of freaking people. There's a lot of and people that think like we do, but then they don't do anything. 
they just think that way. And maybe they think like they'll vote for somebody that's kind of edgy and that's what they do. But I think the more and more we get out there, the more we give people opportunities to do something, then the more they can be brought in, out from behind the computer in the voting box and we can radicalize them into our agorists. Well, let's talk about that because we've talked about getting together and stuff and becoming networked in stuff and making relationships and stuff. stuff. Yeah. Okay. How do we go from that to let's get some shit done for freedom? How does it help freedom? Like real, like brass tacks, what's happening at these as a result of the and stuff? Because I think a lot of people listen to these and they're like, okay, I go to an event and I meet people and then nothing happens. Yeah. I think gardening and food is the big simple thing. Everybody can get behind it. Everybody can do it. Kids, adults, older folks totally non-controversial. So you get together with some people and it's like, what are we going to do now? Let's go plant a garden in your backyard or let's go do some permaculture, berms and swales or something. I think that's always something. It's not illegal yet. I don't think it ever will be in most places, but that's something that people can always do is just get together and get your hands in the dirt. Everybody unites behind that. There's a word within permaculture. It's only in permaculture. It's called permablitz. Yep. And a perma blitz is where you have a permaculture project and everybody comes in on one day. It's a GSD day, but it's a permaculture GSD day. Yeah. And you have like one guy that's got the design and then you orchestrate it and you just make it happen. And it's pretty awesome because like, like if you've got an urban scale, I don't really like the term urban, but that's what they call it in permaculture. That's anything that's a small lot is urban. Um, you could transform somebody's entire life in one day. And then the people go home and they realize, well, maybe maybe 30 people aren't coming to my house to do it with me. But I just learned everything I needed to learn yeah. to do it here. Maybe it takes you a month to do it by yourself, right? Um, but yeah, I think there's incredible power in doing like workshops that are actually workshops that are not like, oh, we're going to have somebody stand up and put up a PowerPoint and tell you things. Like you go out and you actually build something. We've done things yeah. here. We've built garden beds. We've built aquaponic systems and stuff like that. And my hope when people leave is two big things. You can you have the confidence to do it and that your phone, if, if contacts add weight, I want – it doesn't. But if it did, I would want your phone to weigh more. I want people in your phone with full contact information, a picture – because so, that's what I tell people. When you call me, if your picture's not on your contact, <laughs> you're not a real boy. Like, I, you go to voicemail. Unless your picture comes up when you make a phone call, I don't know you, so you go to voicemail. That's my filtering system. I want people adding real people to their contact list, and I want them to do, like, what well, we did this one, and it was easier because we only had, like, 20 students and five staff. I was like, And I had everybody write it on the whiteboard. Your name, your email, your phone number, and three things, which I totally ripped off from Nicole, which shows is three things you're going to do today. But mine was three things about you. Like, I'd be like, I'm a podcaster, I'm a jerk, and I'm a redneck duck farmer, right? I'd be like real simple bullet points. So that when I pull that contact up, and it says Nicole Sauce, and I'm like, who the hell is Nicole Sauce? Sings cool-ass freaking 90s hip music, runs podcast, makes coffee, and there's a picture. I'm like... Oh, her. And then it's like, okay, I I actually now have a need for some information about coffee or WordPress marketing or something else Nicole's good at. And I know I can reach out. She's now in my network for real. Mm -hmm. And that branch is in it's a, a, a dendratic pattern. That's what good networks are. They're dendratic pattern. So a dendratic pattern is a tree comes up and it branches twice and then it branches four times and then it branches eight times and it keeps going, right? And a good network is, I don't just have Nicole. I've got Nicole's network, and I've got a dendrotic pattern. I've got John's network mm. and a dendrotic pattern. Yeah. And, you know, I use that. I'll be, I'll be honest. As a salesperson in corporate sales back in the 90s and early 2000s, I used that shit for evil. Like, it was, who do I know that knows somebody that knows somebody where I can get in and sell a million dollars worth of equipment? Why is that evil? Like, That's not evil. That's just it is evil the way I was. No, tr no, it was like, I want to write a spec that says you have to use my shit where you think I'm helping you. Right. Like that's how we were trained. And but now it's like, OK, this person just asked me a question. I don't know, but I know somebody that might know. And now I'm trying to take Nicole and imagine Nicole doesn't know Neethi. 
and I used my network to find Neathy through John to tie in Nicole. And Nicole yeah. is a, like a, a master at that too. And it makes like it makes me feel good when I tie two people together and go, okay, fuck, I did my shit. I'm done. I'm out of the way. Yeah. And these events cause those connections to have, you know, that seven layers of Kevin Bacon or whatever. Like it's reducing the layers down so that you're closer to that that split that finds you what you need. Or often you find that you're not you, – it's not you that needs a thing. It's somebody you met needs a thing, and you remember, but they don't. Oh, John knows that, or Brian knows that, or Neethy knows that. And then you put them together, and you back out of the way, and you watch what happens. I have, like, two guys that came here years ago. They're running a pretty big farm operation, and they have a processing facility on site they use for their own animals, but they also rent it to other people to come in and use. They put, like, 70 grand just in a processing facility so it would be state certified and all. They met here. The one guy had time. The other guy had money. And they built all of that stuff together just because they met at one event. Nice. That was what I have so much fun doing. I love to be able to take somebody at an event from here to there and introduce them and be like, here you go. Matchmaker. Solutions. Just solutionary. I'm talking to somebody. I just talked to somebody over there. These two need to talk to each other. We just need to get them together. It's so much fun to do that. It's a uh, it's a way to look at wealth. Make me a match. Okay, go ahead. And don't <laughs> <laughs> it's a game no. I like to play. <laughs> it's like, I do. I think this I is, think not, this is a real definition of wealth: having people, connection. Because money can help you get things you want and need in life, but so can people that you trust and that you get each other's back. And there's this reciprocity that's really critical. You can't just take and take and take. You got to give and give, and the more you give, the more you receive. Solutionary. David Sigler, right there. Now I know whose YouTube channel he's oh. on. David, you're cheating on me. Like, what the actual? <laughs> no, he's not. He's not on my channel, Nicole. Where oh, the hell really? is he coming in from? Oh. Solutionary. That is oh. such a... That's some what I just people... said. I was saying about the solutionary. You must be on um... Goose. I mean, just at Jack's events, people like offering to help each other. Like, Jake's offering yeah. people classes to like buy property cheaper or like helping them yeah. not make mistakes. Like, he's not yeah. for that, you know? It's mm -mm. in Haley and Wayne to help the people find land now and kind of setting up a side income so they could get the hell out of their jab jobs. You know, yeah. so that happened right I there. Have a, I have a vision because we do so many events here in central Texas and I have this glorious studio with all this equipment and we're con and I'm always having to pack out the equipment and haul it off to this event, <laughs> uh, this venue. So I want to, one thing that's pulling me in my entrepreneurship to make a, a F ton of money is like, I want to build a world-class event center, community center, workshop space, commercial kitchen, homeschool space, library, and, um, and have big ass events there. Like a, just a full on conference center and stuff to have our own magic space to do all this stuff. Just need a roof. So here's my thing. What is the balance on size of events? Like it, it hurts me every year when I see people I know on a first name basis that have been here like six or seven times and they don't make the cut and get in because I have to put a limit. I have to put a cap on it. The last one we did, somebody put a drone up over the property and I'm like, well, there's it. There it is. There's no, there's no more place for another vehicle that it doesn't exist. But when they get that big, you lose some of that connection Right. And I think we found like the edge of where the connection is still there. And then we just did this one with 20 and it was, it was a totally different thing because most of them coming this time of year in a smaller event, they were new. like, I would say we were like 90% new people. We didn't have that existing relationship that we tend to have with our events. And it took them like, it would have been better if it was a three day event because it was like the last day we did karaoke and barter blanket and all, and everybody kind of merged. It would have been great to have one more day together. But it gets me thinking, like, what if you did a 25-person event, and maybe it wasn't in my garage. Maybe it was at a kind of a little bit of a swanky hotel, and you charged a little bit more money, and, you know, you made it more of um, – it's not just about what you're going to learn and do, but about mm -hmm. who you're going to meet. And you made it that tighter, more exclusive thing. And then the other part of me is like, 
Man, I have for years wanted to do something like in Estes Park, Colorado. There's a huge YMCA facility there. They got all the AV stuff. We could do a thousand people in there. The town's awesome. But if I do a thousand people and somebody comes there to meet me, or if you know Cole's there, or John's there, Neethi's there, Brian's there, and somebody comes there to meet one of you specifically, there's no guarantee that's going to happen. No. And if it does, even when it does, it's kind of like, hey, good to meet you. And they're like, you know, I wanted to talk to you and tell you this. And they tell you the thing. And it's not that you don't care. It's that like 20 other people just told you the thing. And then like it all merges together. And five years later, you meet them like, I met you that one time. And you're like, I feel like a dick, you know? But like, I feel like anybody I just had at this event, if they walked up to me on the street and said, hi, I would know their name. Yeah. And I never yeah. feel like that after an event with 100 people in it. I, I just, my mind is good, but it's not that good. So mm -hmm. where's that sweet spot on really making an event something that's like this tight, intimate thing versus being too limiting? Mm. I like between one, one to 300. Like, it's, it's <laughs> one, one to 300, uh, over after 300. 300 makes my brain hurt. Well, <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get to talk to everybody with the even no. 300. But like... But one to 300 is nice enough where um, everybody can, if they should go home with some new connections. I mean, when I'm saying that, I like to play this game of like, you know, matching the people up together. Um, it's, it makes me feel like, oh, good. I was able, it's kind of like my way of kind of taking care of the folks that I meet at the event to make sure that they did at least meet one person that gave them a solution because I'm not matching them up unless they've said something, you know, that is matching the other person, obviously. So if they didn't get anything to me, an event is successful when I go to it. If I learn even one new thing that I did not know that can change my life. Yeah. One nugget, just one powerful nugget is enough. So if that one connection was able to help them reinforce that, then to me, at least, I mean, I'm just trying to make sure they get the one thing. Out the of the one event. thing, the one so thing. If you That's think about it, different too, event, though, events have different purposes, right? Yeah. When I was doing corporate facilitation, the ideal group size was sixteen people, mm. yeah. not twenty, not eight. Mm -hmm. It was sixteen, and somewhere between ten and sixteen, it worked best mm. because that gave people enough space to process but then also mm -hmm. enough closeness that everybody got to put their input and that developed very, very close relationships. Right. Yes. But if you, if you look at a, an event like Jack's where you're going to have 80 people really with, with staff and everything there, that's still few enough people that you've probably talked to everybody at the event. You may not remember everybody's name, but you remember a good portion of their names. Yeah, and I get at least a out. solid 10 you, you, minutes with everybody. Yeah. Like, you know. You get into 100, 200, 300, it's a different, it's not bad. It's just a different no. approach where you have to start saying, okay, this segment of 80 people is really interested in distilling and they're over there distilling. And this other 80 people is by the campfire and this other 80 people <laughs> are talking liberty and other philosophical stuff. You start making multiple pods where they can oh, where they yeah. can interact, and then that facilitates those close relationships. So I think yeah, you like can do it. When I was working in the public policy world, we had an annual event that the day it got over about six fifty was the day that we lost we lost the closer relationships unless people already knew each other there. Yeah, that's a lot of yeah. People. But I think there's a good thing on the the large side, like Nathy's saying though, like. So the issue is you do a 20 person event and there's a good chance that one or two people just aren't going to mesh with anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So then they're kind of like, sure. I'm just kind of sitting Fucking over Democrat. here, you know, scratching my ear, drinking some rum and awkward, awkward. Uh, right. But if you put two hundred people in place, okay. as long as that person's willing to like, at least to walk mesh. around and listen and think, Oh, I can join in on that. They're probably going to find some group. Some I, I hate to use this word, but click because that's a very yeah. bad word when we think about it, like in high school and all. But like, I think people naturally kind of form groups, like Nicole was saying, and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Like, if you got enough shit going on, like maybe this person is very introverted and they're not really comfortable 
talking about themselves or anything, but they walk up and like, like you said, distilling, maybe they've, they've always wanted to know how to distill. Right. And then there's a guy and he's running a still and there's five dudes standing around or five dudes standing around there. Right. And they're watching the still drip. And that person who yeah. wants to talk, but has that apprehension. I find a lot of times those people, they have a hard time asserting, but they don't have that much trouble asking. Well, like, how does this work? And then they can listen. And then they're part of the conversation just by asking questions. And that, that I, I find so that makes people feel more comfortable when they're not the person that's comfortable being the center of the room. That is so true. I know a lot of people that want somebody else to ask the question. And so you do need to have a little bit of a bigger pool to dip. I think you can. I like. I like big giant events just because it's like a big spectacle and it's all flashy and stuff. But I'm you can shocked have to a hear big... that, John. <laughs> to I know. We would have never thought so. You can have a big, sexy, like big major event, right? And then throughout the year, you have little satellite events and stuff, right? It, it doesn't have to be either or. Um, you know, the cool thing we do with the Freedom Cell Network structure is that you have your small groups of eight and they spend most of the time together or even the middle group that's like regional. And then, but then we bring the whole body together occasionally, not as often as the smaller groups. So kind of with events, you can have like a big giant event and it's like a big, I see the real big events that are mostly speakers and stuff as like pep rallies. It's getting everybody pumped up. It's getting everybody to get rid of their limiting beliefs. It's showing people what's possible. And then you go home and you start working with your little groups or you go to the hands-on workshop and that's where the real work is. But you go back home or you go back to your group to implement with the renewed uh, vigor and a renewed sense of energy because you were just at this big, loud, exciting kind of deal. So um, I got to roll here in a sec, but I wanted to plug Float Fest, which is coming up. Jack's going to be there. That's going to be the second one that they've done. It's uh, our good friends, Aaron and Kingsley. They are behind Float, uh, which is a social media app that they're going to unloose. <laughs> they're going to unleash and unloose uh, the next version of it, which I think will be a little more sophisticated. But as it is now, it's a great social media network. People can check it out at float.app. But that's April. Uh, April. Let me see. The end of April. The website is 29th to May 3rd. Com. Yeah, April 29th through March. May 3rd. Or, May 3rd. April 29th through May 3rd in Gallows, Texas, which is like an hour northeast of Austin. So I was at the last one. It was super cool, super chill. You can bring your RV. It's a camp out kind of deal. And it's just our kind of people hanging out. And there's if definitely you're going, emphasis If you're on, on the way, out. Seattle to Austin. <laughs> Seattle to Austin. I am driving. Yeah, I want that's to where I met you, Austin Brian. Someday. Who wants a who wants an epic road trip? I will pick You're you the up. You're the stoner coffee guy in the reindeer costume and give you a ride. <laughs> we might <laughs> want to, to be in the reindeer costume, costume. In, in May. It's going to be pretty hot. Um, and then uh, we did the Exxon and Build Land Summit in November. It was a huge hit. We had like a hundred people. We're going to do it again May 13th through the 15th. And this time we booked the Bastrop Convention Center. So we're going to have 500 people. So it's going to be one of those big ass events. But there are going to be little breakout things where you can go down and go deeper on a topic. So that's May 13th through the 15th. We haven't launched the tickets, but I would love for our Unloose the Goose community to be in attendance because it's really special getting together with, with these people. 13th through the 15th? May yep. 13th through the 15th. Where is be that Be there one? or be Road enslaved. Trip. Where, where is that? Texas. Bastrop. It's here. It's literally mm -hmm. right down the road from where I am right now. We got so Joel Salatin coming in person and the one, the only Jack Spierko. Can you believe it? We booked freaking Jack Spierko. Whoa. It's hard to do, man. And Nicole yeah. Sauce. Nicole was a, a crowd pleaser last time. She nailed it with her talk. She's funny. She was in flow mode. It was really good. So What's on the float fest thing, thing, here's the thing that might happen on float fest. 13th to the 15th. Might. Jack's going to get naked. No, Jack is not going to get naked. But I, I had one of, one of the highlights of my podcasting career Monday. I got to interview the podfather himself, Adam Curry. Wow. And I have a maybe, possibly Adam Curry showing up at Float Fest. Oh, cool. sweet. Whoa. That's a good little tease there. Yeah. Yes. It could happen. You don't know. You got to show up and see if it does. He's pretty libertarian, huh? Oh, so the, uh, the, way uh, more than I even realized. 
Yeah. The marketing. Guy I love that little click of podcast elite like Joe Rogan, uh, Adam Curry. You know what's the other guy? Tim Pool. They're Jack like Spirko. really influencing society. Jack Spearco, of course. <laughs> yes. And all of them are all libertarian, which is great. So the uh, yeah, the marketing guy for Nexus, who's going to be one of the crypto sponsors for Float, reached out to me, and he wants to make my sign for my psychedelic coffee cafe. So. Nice. Boom. I'm going to have signage this year, I guess, that I didn't make or buy. What, are you going to put LSD in the coffee or something? No. I want to go back to something in the comments, guys. In the space. Mushroom in the coffee. There oh, was the, the Society for Creative Anachronisms chat that Jack's been nerding out on. <laughs> and they're talking about how big SCA events, for anybody who doesn't know what that is, it's like a med medieval recreation group. Big SCA events are fun because you can go to where your interest is and the way that's organized if it's a big event is that you have encampments and the encampments have things going on you might have some uh, that are focused on armor making you might have somebody who's more into mead making it could be somebody who's showing people how to weave it could just be like let's hang out and party and that takes a big event and makes small Many communities within the event, which is kind of yeah. like Float Fest. That's how yeah. I understand Float Fest works, right? Pork that, Fest does that too. They like decentralize it. The most recent one it's had like, like Burning 2, Man, five hundred people, and then people can set up their own tent and stage and host like a variety of topics at their own little tent and stuff. Yeah, it's a decentralized Float Fest self organizes, thing. right? Of you yeah. just plant your flag and build your thing around your whatever because it's one hundred and fifty acres of open space. Right. Um, yeah, do you remember at Swatch Fest, I tried to split my 10 acres up into six mythical lands, right? To distribute people according to their, you know, music tolerance level of mm. down speaker and up, speak, you know, just so they would distribute themselves. Um, didn't have enough people to make it, it's all numbers versus space. So trying yeah. to find the right amount of people for the right space for the right interaction, that's. That's 90% of getting the event right. <laughs> Got someone all excited there. <laughs> uh, a comment there. That's awesome. Yeah. Family friendly show. I could see if you didn't have context when you heard that comment. Yeah. <laughs> There's always context. I got to sign out. Guys. We're show. not even going to tell you. You should have made the live stream. I'm just saying. Uh -huh. I'm not going to end the broadcast, though, but I'm heading out. Thanks, guys. Thanks, You're everybody. Right. Bye, John. Bye, John. Bye, John. Thanks Bye, for being here tonight, man. Honk, honk. Bye. 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 So, so how yeah. do we get more strategic about cross-event pollination? Because I think the real power, and I, I talk about this in underground networking, there's the traveler who's like the old-fashioned bard. The traveler goes from place to place to place, and they, they connect everybody. They connect information how do we advise people to get that done with all the various events going on that are liberty focused that facilitate decentralized organization, AKA anarchy? Well, one way a traveler might fund their travels between the different festivals. Yeah. Interact with us manufacturers that have excess capacity and they can become a white label manufacturer. So they can literally live on the road, don't have to have a plant or facility or equipment, and their resupply can continually be shipped to their next place, right? So manufacturers can stay put and have redistributors redistributing their stuff as they go around and make connections, right? Hubs and spokes. Yeah, that's a great idea because let me just tell you, and you know from personal experience, sending a box to somebody that he's not aware he's getting – not a good idea at his event because he's like walking over here, Jack walking over Jack. Like, and then the box shows up at the end of the last day. I don't know what to do with it. Like, but having someone that can coordinate that, like, yeah, that's even if it's not white label, let's say that someone lived in Washington and they were going to come here to a workshop, Brian. And you have a pretty good audience, or Nicole, if you weren't coming, but you have to come. You, you're, you're not allowed to not come. You're at this <laughs> last one, I forgave you because you had your own thing going on, but not having you suck. But let's say you couldn't come for whatever reason. I don't know. You were singing 99 Luff Balloons in Carnegie Hall, so you couldn't come. 
And so both of you sell coffee and you can sell a lot of coffee into my audience. I, I imagine like the post office or whoever you use doesn't ship your coffee for free. So when you're coming, you take pre-orders and you bring it with you. But what if you weren't coming? It's probably the case that if you reached out into the internal network, the TSPC network, and said, I, I'm selling coffee. If anybody's swinging you know, close to me that will take it down, I'll pay you half of what I would pay to ship it all. That person could conceivably pay for most of the cost of being there just by bringing your stuff. You, you ship at half price technically. You deliver. You get more sales. Everybody wins. Yeah, monetize. Your how many permeations of that exist? It's you know just once. I think you have to have a different mindset of like I'm not going to be a particular place based thing, right? Yeah. And then how do you get stuff done? How do you have other people do your stuff? And the thing that you're doing is going around meeting people and being able to vend, vend stuff, and make connections. Because once they sell the thing once too, right? If they were selling my coffee for me at different events that I wasn't at, then I might have a resale on their coupon code that they could get paid on forever. So they could like literally become a rep and be able to stay on the road doing what they like to do, whatever, hiking every day or going kayaking. And do we like, do we need to get together? I just don't mean the group, goose group, like our extended networks of influencers, sure. right? And do we need to do something really, really big? Really big. Like, I look at what they're doing with Anarcha Poco, and I think it's cool. But they offered to pay for everything and have me go, and it was still a pain in the ass to where I couldn't go, and I wanted to go. Like, what if we put on something that level here in the United States? Like, I think it would be badass. That it could be badass. <laughs> yeah, people don't like to do it. Better. Is it? I got a space, 10 acres. How many people? How many people? No, we're going to need more than 10 acres if we're doing what I'm talking about. No, you're going to need <laughs> like, them, We're, we're yeah. either talking about like, <laughs> we're talking about like, like I said, like Estes and like the y, that YMCA facility is like 130 acres. Plus you got Rocky Mountain National, plus you got the whole town there. Or you're wow. talking like one of these hotels that's like a full on resort. Like you feel like you're outside, but you're inside hotel. Like I'm talking something that like would be, if, if None, I don't think any of y'all went to any of the Permaculture Voices Conference, but the first two of those, those were, my God, there were literally thousands of people there. Like one I've been of the South by Southwest. That was, that was a do. Something of that size, right? Mm -hmm. I think we could do something of that size. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think we should do, do something we want of that to? size because the same thing is, Dress. It's going to have smaller communities within the community. Mm -hmm. It can be manageable. Do we have people who want to go? Also, where can we do that right now? Yeah. Texas and Florida. Because mm -hmm. South Dakota is too fucking far and cold. You yeah. can do it in Tennessee. Tennessee. We can do Tennessee. Tennessee's mm -hmm. good. Tennessee's good. And uh, Texas is good. And so yeah. is Denver. Because all, like, so Nashville ish. DFW-ish and um, like Denver-ish, you can get there in a reasonable flight from almost anywhere in the country. And you can drive there from most places if you want to. Mm -hmm. Like even driving from Chicago to here in, in Dallas is 12 hours. I think Chicago to Denver is like 14. Like it, you, you can do it. Nashville, like for me, is like 14 hours, something 12. like that. Well, yeah, yeah, a long way. Ask me how I know. Okay, <laughs> but what I'm saying is you can like because I, I'm I'm just saying I love what they're doing in Alcapoco. I love yeah. the opportunity they gave me and all, but it's a what? international travel in February, and for most of us, we're all homesteaders. You know when you don't want to leave your property, when you you're going to be gone for ten days and you could get all ten days being below fucking zero. Yeah. You don't want to be away because, like, no matter who you have watching your property, they you're the one that knows them. everything. And that person that's capable yeah. of doing it for you, they probably have their own property to worry about. And they don't want to be away from – like, that's why I didn't go. Like, my, my guy Michael, like, I was like – he could be here to cook and help for a couple of days, but he can go home if he had to. Like, if something really comes in, like a major weather front in February, mm -hmm. I didn't want him having to make a choice between his place and mine. I didn't think I was right. 
And I was like, we could do something here in the States. And I think we could be bigger because it's easier. And the main market is U.S. Sure, they have people coming in from Europe and all, but the main market's U.S. There are some pretty crazy private facilities you can rent in Las Vegas. I had some customer events that had like limo buses that would make a hotel loop and bring them to private giant houses. I can hate Vegas. (laughs) Oh. <laughs> I can go. To, I can go to um, Shot Show every year. Full boat ride on everything, well, and it's, it's Vegas. So much- it's fucking Vegas. That's you know what's what good about Shot Show? Range right. day, and the rest of it sucks. It's just too many people. Mm. It's too big. I don't want to be that big. I don't know if any of y'all have ever been to Shot Show, but it's it's like a hundred plus thousand attendance. That's 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 not what I'm talking about. It's too big. I'm not talking casinos. I was talking renting a private space. That's crazy. Ah. Yeah. I so the- I- theoretically speaking, um, if we were going to do something like this, what time of year would be best? And thank you, Riley868. I'm glad you had fun at Self Reliance Festival. If we did something that big, we could be more family friendly than I am. And it's not that I'm not for families. It's like, I have a spatial limit, so then you start bringing, like, Patrick comes and brings, like, 19 children. Like, I, I can't do that. So, to yeah. me, summer, because people have kids out of school, even if you're homeschoolers, you've throttled mm-hmm. back what you're doing. Yeah. June. Yeah, when June, you, July, you August. I feel like summer. July and August get to be so hot sometimes for these things. Yeah. Like, That's why Colorado's attractive Yeah, in Estes July. would be, like, yeah. August and Estes is, like, You just get out of the south at that point. Yeah. <laughs> At night, you're putting a jacket on even. I mean, like, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. Estes is amazing. Like, honestly, if I if we could do Estes, it'd be harder because of kids and school and all. But I wouldn't want to do September. September's mm. when the elk all come down out of the mountains and they're, like, walking through the town and shit. And dumbass <laughs> rednecks, like, Chili. are blowing horns at giant seven-by-seven seven bulls in the middle of the street. And you're like, if we wait long enough, <laughs> one of these elk is going to destroy this guy's truck. All we have to do is sit here and wait, and we're going to see an elk destroy a pickup truck. And so that would be cool. America's funniest. Uh, there, there's a whole business model about this in the Liberty mm-hmm. Movement. If we didn't, if we didn't have small kids, I'd try to go to some workshops. There needs to be like the Liberty Workshop, like for, Anarchy for itty bitty. Workshop Daycare Center <laughs> that goes right by. So, the parents <laughs> so somebody school- needs to do that. At Squatch Fest, that's what the, Patricia... The Anne Rand. The, the so Anne Patricia Rand, Rand Daycare, daycare Center. Center. So Patricia <laughs> was the attorney that, that does the contract stuff, right? So she ran Kitty Land for us. And then uh, Wade's wife was like an army nurse. So her and the army nurse ran Kitty Land. So I was like, what? Well, you, you can't have... You can't have a great band rocking in the field, right? And have any kind of families if parents don't want to leave their kids like i'm gonna go have fun for 10 minutes ah, i can't so yes it, kitty land was like got so you gotta have trusted people right and and all that but definitely needed at festivals because we can't be family friendly you have to be able to you have to be open-minded as a parent um involved in a community like you can't feel you can't be that helicopter mom right and the problem is I don't know. I feel like, how do you, I, I like, I like how, um, I, like, I like John, I like John's rule where it's like, if you have to ask me if you can bring your kids, you can't bring your kids. That is a greatest rule. I have the way I heard him state that the other day. I just it's, was it's, like, we have so many kids. Like we had <laughs> probably 15 kids at self-reliance festival, all of them just fine. Yeah, because every time somebody asks, "Can I bring kids?" He's like, "If you have to ask me, then no, you cannot bring right. your kids." I mean, right. I took my kids everywhere when they were small, so, so. and I did workshops and I did all of that stuff, and I immersed them in all of that, and also I had them ready. I had them ready to understand, and I maybe didn't stay all the day, or I took breaks, or I made sure that you know I took them to the van so that we could have a little snack break and focus and you have to give them some attention. So you got to take it in bites or whatever. You got to plan it and you got to be a little bit more on guard. And, you know, maybe we just don't want to do that, but I raised my kids specifically so I could take them to these places or wherever I want to go. My kids came with me everywhere. 
And I wasn't expecting somebody else to take care of them because we're radically self-reliant, aren't we? And if that, if that's the case, then you're going to make sure you make it work. Um, but if you feel like you can't go there because you have small kids, then maybe you need to raise them and maybe you need to change what you're doing at home so that you can get them ready. So they will be, because my kids, when they were two knew <laughs> they couldn't touch the little glass things on a coffee table at somebody's house, you know, or whatever. I could let my two year old come with me to grandma's and everywhere. And they didn't touch anything or destroy anything. Even my third one, who was the wildest one, she was the wild, wild one. See, I think, though, a lot of times the whole not kid friendly thing isn't that the kids aren't welcome. It's that it's not what kids want. Right. So, like, I can think of two really big events, Rabbit Stick and Firefly. Kids everywhere. No problem because it's outside. So if if the parents are all watching how to make a deadfall trap or something, the kids are having a game over here. And there's enough adults around to make sure the kids, like, don't run off a cliff. And that that's that's all fine. But a lot of our events are like, if we do them at hotels or all, it's session after session after session. And adults are all into, okay, well, how do I track their pigs? Right. Or how do I learn how to lease land or how like, and kids are like, I want to draw a picture of a donkey, right. Or whatever. Like, and so in those, maybe we just need more things for Outside. the kids. Like we said, the daycare, but I don't mean daycare as in, Drop your kid off and don't pay attention to them all day long. I mean, it's like that one session you wanted to see. Right. And, and that's when your kid just, they're, they're a kid. They're done. And mommy, I, I I watched that guy talk about fiefdoms, whatever that is, and I don't care anymore. <laughs> and I want to go out and play. And like, there's this thing you really want to see. And I think a lot of times when people say it's not kid friendly, they don't mean the kid isn't welcome. They mean that like, I know that I'm not going to be happy because I'm going to have to do too much to, to make sure my kids are happy. Because I, I don't think it's reasonable to expect a child to sit with their freaking hands under their legs no. for four days while Joel Salatin and Alan Savory talk. I I understand. Maybe I, Joel, but not Alan. <laughs> you know, maybe Joel. Maybe, yeah, maybe but not, Joel, yeah. but not Alan. But yeah, okay, so this is not a dig against any of you guys out there, you know, saying you don't know how to raise your kids or whatever. All I'm saying is that as a parent, I knew, I knew when I was taking my kids what the limits are for them. When they were, you know, six and under, I, I knew that. I knew what it was. And I knew, you know, how much attention I had to be able to make sure to give to them. So it, any of the things that I went to, I had to plan it out. And there was a way to do it. Okay. And yeah, there were some of them I wasn't going to go to. Or like what Jack is saying, if it's at a hotel or somewhere where you know that it's going to be tough, guess what? I used to take a friend. I used to take one of my friends. Sure, or exactly. I would, yeah. <laughs> I have also paid a teenager to come with me on this trip and they would take my kids to the pool at the hotel for the times that I wanted to really focus on something specific. And then I would take them with me to some parts and pieces of it. And I would even maybe have that teenager, not maybe, definitely, walking around with me wherever we were. So at any given moment, that person, that teenager friend, friend of ours or whoever it was that I brought with us, my own childcare that I brought with me, could take them back to the room or take them to the pool or take them for a walk or, or do something if that's something that was required. So... I mean, there's there's ways to, to to manage it. Also, grandma. Sometimes I don't want grandma with me for a whole lot of things, but maybe grandma wants to go for some part of it and she just wants to be with the kids. And if they know that I'm working at a conference, which we've done this before, my husband and I, where we've taken grandma with us because the conference was somewhere nice, like at a beach somewhere. But also, you know, we wanted to go as a family. Grandma could be there to help with the kids. And also we could all be there for certain events and everybody could come around and like rotate. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think in a big event, especially at somewhere like the resort in Colorado, that Jack keeps talking about if somebody's really into organizing activities that are, that kids would be interested in. <laughs> That can make a big difference because it is it is great to have kids around some of these freedom 
focused things because they're get they're getting exposure to that. And that's really awesome. It's it's just when you know, I had somebody at my my workshop, which is coming up soon, send me an email and they said, This is gonna sound weird, but can two people share a ticket? This is what I mean by that. I'm going to be there sometimes and my wife is going to be there sometimes. We will never be there at the same time because we have a child. We can't find daycare. I'll even pay you more. We promise not to be at two meals at the same time. I would do that. And I was like, I think I have a daycare solution for you locally because the person I would send my kids to if I had kids is here. And, you know, and, and that changed the conversation, but I would totally do that because they want to make sure their kid learns well. And then they also, and it is taken care of, but they also want to go to the workshop and both parents want to have that community interaction. Right. And my workshop is, is definitely not a kid friendly environment. There's going to be swearing. There's going to be drinking. There's going to be tedious long sessions. We are going to like dig holes in the ground and they might like that part. Kids might like that part, but there's, the kid there's would have a great here. vacation, though, because they would be with the other parent, not at the workshop, being in Nashville, doing Nashville things. They wouldn't even yeah. know it was a workshop. It would be a kid parent right. alone time. It would be yeah. awesome for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> great idea. That, yep. is great, that is a great All idea. right, guys. I really have to go because I have a contractor that's coming, and I apologize. Yeah. That's okay. Um, Because I've been missing everybody, and I couldn't wait to come back. So oh, we'll see you soon. Have fun with that contractor. All right, guys. See you, Navy. Bye. It's good to see everybody. All right, Todd. You know, oh. David says upper floors have balconies, so they have extra space for free range children while you travel. <laughs> balconies, I love it. Oh, yeah. We used to get left everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That never led to trouble. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> Oh my God. It, it's funny because I went to so many adult events with my parents and now we're afraid to do that. And I get it. Like I'm the person who banned kids from my spring workshop, but that's, that's a whole different story. Yeah. There are other times when kids are fine here, but right. I got to meet the kid first. Right. Yeah. yeah. What'd y'all do to Niki while I was gone? We, <laughs> we, we made her, we made her cry and leave. That's me. I pulled well, her hair. <laughs> we said something like this to her. Uh, like um, uh, David's comment, I heard that Nicole ties raw pork chops around kids' necks and makes them clean out the kennels at the local animal rescue. Yes, is, is that what you did? Yeah, yeah, it's totally what we did to her. <laughs> my, my I heard kind of what was going on there as I came back in, and my limit at my workshop is no kids, but if you ask. And that's maybe why some of them are asking. Maybe there's some of crossover pollination yeah. thing. If you ask, and they're over 14. Yeah. Maybe. Different. Maybe. Yeah. And, it's, and I don't go with if you have to ask because then people think like, well, I don't have to ask. My kids are well behaved. No, that's not what I mean. Like, to me, if I let you bring your kid, I'm, I'm, that kid's taking a seat that I'm going to have to tell somebody else no to. That's I have a spatial limitation. If I could have 300 people here, it wouldn't even be an issue. It would be like, if you're okay with your kids hearing fuck a bunch of times, right? And I don't have to tell people to tone it down for you. That's on you. You do what you want to do. Yeah. But I have a spatial limitation in like, if I don't think the kid's going to... So I'm like a 14-year-old that has the intellectual capacity to understand what we're doing and wants to be here. I don't want to get in the way of that. And I, and I know it's an arbitrary number, but it was just kind of like... I, I think if we're over that, we're probably good. Yeah, for my April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, it's at the house. And they're going to be sleeping here, camping style in the outbuildings. Yeah. And so we're limiting it to eight. And there's definitely no kids because there's going to be like water bongs and all kinds <laughs> of craziness going down. So, yeah, no kids. Uh, now, for Squatch Fest, family friendly, right? Ten acres of camping. You can camp way far away from shenanigans and have kid village or whatever. So yeah, yeah. It's appropriate to the group and the activity for sure. Cool. Okay. So if we were going to wrap this all up, what's our big picture thoughts on events, workshops, all of it. Are we, are we, are we doing unloose the goose fest in uh, Colorado in September? 
I don't know about December. September. Fuck. It's Maybe. cold. No, September September's is not, not the best month for me, but I'm a no, it's not the best month for me, but it would be the best month for there. There would yeah. be the, the I think least. it was actually early October that I was there and it was amazing, but like that's way too close to my fall event. Yeah, it is. So I go to uh for Labor Day Fish Place Dicks at Denver every year for Fish for, Place for Dicks. Dicks fish God, place. that sounds like a South Park episode. And uh <laughs> yeah, we blow out and go up to Estes right there, September first, second, third, whatever, and it's all of those. Yeah, it's the beginning of it. It's beautiful. I'm, I'm about but, to pull some shit from an earlier thing. Hey, like, tie it on to the end of the Labor Day week or beginning, and I'm there already. This has nothing to do with what what we're talking about now, but it it I don't think I can bring in a video clip and not have it automatically it play. Emergency powers to the Supreme Chancellor. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to bring that in earlier. By the time I got it pulled off, it was already passed, and I couldn't let it go to waste. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. It's removed from studio. I promise not to do it again. Am I going to LFTN 22? Okay, I will tell you this. I've cl I have made my coffee club schedule so that it could possibly happen because I could loop back through float but that's a lot of extra miles for gas. So if somebody wants to take the epicest road trip of all time and is down for fueling the old uh, all-wheel drive six-cylinder to Tennessee, I'm in. PM me. What about TSPC 22? In the fall? Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not driving yeah, down there. Okay. I'm going to high then. I'll come down. <laughs> They're so damn cheap. I'm flying to Dallas. Dallas is ridiculous round trip. Did you well, fly in last time? Well, yes, on American. Okay. Now. I'm ban I'm banned for life from Alaska. Well, the customer service agent said uh, I'm banned <laughs> until the craziness ends. So I got her to say it on the taped recording. I'm like, good. So when the no until the, so the craziness ends. Yeah, yeah, that's my lifetime ban. This is actually actually not lifetime, but they won't stop marketing to me. They will not. Stop sending me credit card offers. You got banned every from Alaska or Air Alaska. I, I need to be clear on this. Did you get like, banned from the entire state of Alaska? Well, no, just Alaska Airlines. Just oh, okay. I just, all right. Yeah, all right. fell asleep with the Until mask. the craziness ends, Jack. Yeah, it just right, four, until crazy. But that's four it's forever. Slash really until the craziness ends. I was like, so can I have that in a letter? Because <laughs> I had a boss that got banned from Puerto Rico. Oh. Like all of Port can't go anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, if they don't know you're there. <laughs> oh shit. We so shut down the power to have Puerto wait, Rico. Wait, how do you get so. banned from Puerto Rico? We we were doing some work on some power systems and he screwed up mm -hmm. and he he basically shut down power to all of San Juan and like half of the surrounding areas. <laughs> and like literally like a post like a like a a, a burn notice went out like this guy's not allowed in Puerto Rico at all. <laughs> Period. A lifetime ban or a like, I don't know if it was lifetime, but it was <laughs> long enough that he never went again. When we had to go down there and do work, he, he never went again. Oh jeez. That's hilarious. So go to festivals. Like, he said, I got banned from Alaska. I was like, well, it's possible, I guess. I mean <laughs> you get, I got banned from uh, they threw me out of France. <laughs> I, but by the little bit of French that I knew, I talked my way out of jail because the little guard was so cute. <laughs> for France. Yeah, yeah. That's French all don't ban says. anything. He said, you have to get out within 24 hours. I was like, oh, good. We're going back to the perfect. Perfect. We agree. <laughs> I'm out. And I kept my handcuff key as a souvenir. Oh, yeah, that was a trip. See, this is why you go to events. You want to hear more about that story from Brian? Because that was just the highlights. Well, you got, you got to go to an event and see him in person, right? That's how it ended. Oh, my God. Tell me the French key banning event, Brian. That's what you got to do. You got to go find him, corner him, get that done. You, you want to go to an event with Brian because he might roll a joint that's as big around as this can. It could happen. <laughs> I'm not saying it happened here, oh. but it could happen. It would never happen there. Only in Washington State where it's legal, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, CBD joints. You can roll that shit anywhere now. Oh, 
You yes. can have an ounce in Texas and not get anything more than a ticket, which they won't even write you because government is stupid and they decriminalize CBD so and they just didn't put CBD. any money in the budget for testing. <laughs> so in small amounts, it's just not worth testing it. So you just like at CBD, but that doesn't mean you need to put the entire ounce <laughs> in one joint, Brian. I'm just saying it's not necessary. You could, you could. Okay, okay. Along but that line, did. this T-shirt <laughs> actually. Some people from uh, the uh, TSP out I there. Veteran. This. It says yeah, drug so war veteran. Drug, drug war, war veteran. veteran. Oh, okay. All right. I made those. They're uh, they will be delivered tomorrow. He's Hot like, the press. I did that. So. And the front of it says uh, Entheogenic Medics Division 420. They're for sale on my website right That's now. That's kind of cool. Yeah, because you know what? Let's start a conversation. It's earth medicine. Never killed anyone ever in the history of the world. No documented deaths ever. Has an LD number, lethal dose of zero. So anyway conversation starter and uh five bucks for everyone i'm donating to ps uh to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder research so come to float buy a shirt make me print more lots more and if anybody wants to sell them on their website i will for sure hook you up with the printer i will give you the art you can have the files whatever i'm just trying to start a conversation sorry Hijacked it. So wait a minute. Are, weren't we talking about if we're going to do like giant goose fest 20? We're talking about goose fest. Yeah. Yeah. The, goose the, fest. The coordinating thing, right? 2022 so I'm coming or down. is it 2023 at this point? It we're, might be 2023 at this point. I can't do the barbecue because it's the logistics of the 2025 stuff. is too far out. I agree. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. no. I'm down. I'm going to float and plan on weed camp all goose geeses that are there. We'll camp together, Me right? Too. I'm a bitter goose about not being able to be there, just so you know. This is one you, bitter goose. You could get there. There's airplanes. One bitter goose. I'm as one bitter you, goose. As soon as you I wanted to go so out, bad. You just fly to Austin. She's, she's a goose stuffed with grab. mugwort. I am. I'm a mugwort go goose. I'm going to hide. He doesn't understand here. what happens after my workshop for three days. I know. You hibernate, right? No, I'm still putting all that shit away and getting it cleaned up. There. Wow. Yeah. You could just yeah. abandon it, come back to it. It will it'll still be there. Nicole, we learned that there are people that will come put all your shit away for you for money. Yeah. <laughs> I might try and, that. And you know how year. you get the right person to put your shit away? You put all your shit away one year yourself. So it's all where you want it. Yeah. And the next year, you don't hire them to put your shit away. You hire, you hire them to, take them to your shit set up. your shit up and put it away. Then they know where it goes back to. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. That's brilliant. That's that's what we've done. And we we budgeted that into the ticket price. And it's like, and if Dorothy complains about anything, I'm like, call the person to do the work. Don't tell me about doing the work. You're not supposed to do it. Call the person and make them come do the work because that's what they do. They there's people that clean stuff and pick stuff up and pack stuff up. And yes, it's so much better. Cause we did, cause this time we're like, well, we don't need to do that. It's a small one. That sucked. We shouldn't have yeah, done that. Good. We should have paid the person to do the work. Yeah. yeah if you're going to do events, get help, spread the, spread the work around. Don't try and do too much or you'll have a heart attack. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Have a dedicated place where you put the things. That's the other yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah she, we have an event shed, right? Yeah. That was my intern, Josiah, way back in 2012, that was like his one good idea. He's like, you need an event shed. Every other idea was terrible. But event shed, that has paid dividends. That was so great. I like the uh, the big black Costco boxes, and I label the front and the side. So no matter which way it gets put somewhere, you can see what's inside. What's in there. Or it just gets lost, you know, like, oh, and then you end up buying the same thing for the event like four times. My other thing with events is we're, that's what we're supposed to be talking about tonight anyway. The -ish. Hire people. Yeah. Don't Red do volunteers. Because yeah. when you're like, well, everybody needs this thing done right now. And they're like, but I want to see this one session. They're volunteer. You got nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that person's a volunteer, which means I work when I feel like it. Right. Which is totally reasonable. That's a totally reasonable position. But when I hired you and I said, I'm paying you $100 a day or $120 a day or whatever it is, okay, that means 
I own you for that time period. You voluntarily submitted to slavery under my benevolent dictatorship, and I need this thing done. And when you hire people that way, everything is better. It, that doesn't mean you can't have any volunteer help, but then volunteer help needs to be like, it's the cherry on the whipped cream on the Sunday. Yeah. Right. And you're, you're, it's great yeah. that that's there. Like the dude one year, Nicole, what's his name? Josh, that watered down the mounding problem mm -hmm. in our porta potties yeah. because we didn't order enough. We thought five porta potties was enough. Apparently, Not... we were wrong. And Nicole comes to me and she was like, you can see, like, I don't really want to say this, but Jack, you have a. a a mounding problem. And I'm like, <laughs> what? She was in a porta potty. I'm like, oh shit! And it was like we still had like Literally, another day sure. and a half to go. Yeah. And this dude, like, it was the, the guy that does uh, Better Together Life, right? Yeah. Uh, he's like, uh, you got a hose? I'll go take care of it. I'm like, really? And like, my payment was when he went to get dinner that night. I'm like, whatever the fuck he wants, you give it to him. <laughs> like, well, I don't give a fuck if it's first, second, third. Whatever he wants, you give it to him. <laughs> and that's fine for like kind of that stuff. But like the stuff you're relying on, servers, cleaners, people take yep. out the garbage, like whatever it is they do. Parking Nazi, wage, parking Nazi, food beverage. Come yeah. up with a wage, and you pay them, and then this is what I expect for the wage, like anybody else. Because I did my first workshop with volunteer labor. Ouch. I did everyone after that with paid labor. Including yeah. people that think they're volunteers. I'm like, no, you get paid. Because it just, like, I think that, like, if you're running a good workshop, people don't mind paying to come. They, you know, some people can't afford to, so they don't come. But the people who can afford to pay, if you're delivering value, they pay, they, they pay. So then you take that and then you spreadsheet it, goes in Excel, and then here's my labor. And then you figure out what you can pay people. You pay them beyond what's fair. And then everybody's much happier and it like i had to raise my prices this fall and i'll probably raise my prices again next fall to like 600 because everything costs me more my, my yeah, price was established in 2012 i don't know if you've noticed like shit costs more now yeah well the inflation that's hitting now at the grocery store which is your biggest cost is food Ooh, it it's is real. you know that 20 percent increase on beef is not insignificant mm-hmm -mm. No, it's, yeah. flow, it's flowing through. Yes. Yeah. It's funny. Jack, I want to hear you sing that song just one time. So many people have asked that question. Walt's asking right now, does Jack sing, sing that song. the UTG intro song? I don't know why anybody believes that. If you've been here and you've been to karaoke, you know what the answer is. No. No. You know what you missed, Nicole? What? We had one group of like six people sing karaoke consistently for over an hour yeah like just keep going just keep goes me and jr and like five other people it was just like always up Which there made everybody suck less but i'm like okay i'm gonna pick a song and they're like it's gonna be another chris stapleton song i'm like all right motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> I, uh i did the one by uh Mid midnight oil uh from yeah. the 80s what's that oh uh, the bridges are burning or <laughs> bridge yeah beds are burning yeah. And they're like everybody couldn't keep up and shit like, fuck, Jack, you're an asshole. I'm like, hey, you know what? I was happy with Chris Stable. <laughs> but you wanted to run your mouth. You thought I had no musical depth. Although random so, karaoke could be fun, setting that out live. Pick your song. It's been known to happen. Nicole has sung 99 Red Luff Balloons in I my shop. In, in German? German? Mm -hmm. In German, yeah. yes. She can do that. She can Go do soft. that. Oh, it's very helpful if I can actually see the words, but yes. You know, that's a good thing to throw in right here toward the end, if it is toward the end. Um, shit like karaoke is great. Yes. We do karaoke. We do giant Jenga. Mm -hmm. We do darts. We do pool, even though my pool table's warped. That's a great thing. You get a cheap pool table that has like the uh, the uh, OSB petting. Yeah. You keep it out in the garage. Eventually, the board will warp. And oh. watching people try to level a table that the problem is that the actual... <laughs> keep going around and making it higher. You can, you one can more level, time. like you put the level on the bumpers and you can level the table perfectly. It's still got to lean in and lean out. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. Oh. And it's fun to watch that when they're like trying to turn the things and wedge it with cardboard. And you're like, 
Should we tell them? Nah, fuck them. Nah. <laughs> They're having too much fun. Yeah, They're helpers, right. Jack. They're helpers. Okay, so sum it all up. If we're going to do an Unloose the Goose Summit, mm-hmm. we, we got to get our shit together on that. A goose Summit. A Goose Summit. 23. 23. Well, I don't know. I hate to admit it, because I don't like to wait that long, but it probably is at this point, isn't it? It's almost March. Yeah. yeah. But this is burning by. It's through. And we're all committed to shit, like, already. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> Goose Fest 2023. Because oh, that would give you time to park Colorado for real, right? If you wanted to go that big. And, and I would like to emulate. Later, I vote twice. I would like to emulate to a degree Anarchapoco. So they have like a day that's like not necessarily following their path anyway because mm-hmm. they have like a day that's like everybody bitches. Like I don't want to do that. But like they have a day that's like all like permaculture regen ag shit and they have a day that's like all crypto shit yes like something like that because then and you then can blow out and go hiking if you don't want to do that day and but the one thing i i've always hated at these events is when you do tracks mm. and you have competing mm-hmm. presentations because i hate being the asshole that's speaking opposite somebody that i can pull so many people in and then they don't get you know what i mean like I hate being that guy, and I hate when somebody's better than me and I am the other guy. That sucks too. It does suck. Like when you're speaking opposite Joel Salatin, that sucks. Mm-hmm. And when you're speaking opposite somebody where you're the Joel Salatin, that sucks for them. And I I don't like that. I now that like I bitched about events till I did them, and now I don't ever bitch about anybody's event ever, and I never will. Right. Because That's like okay. once you're like trying to fit everybody in a schedule, you're like you're like there's uh, not enough hours in the day. Yeah. What are we yeah. Doing? How do I put it? Like you're like you should have 15 minutes of buffer, and I'm like, how the fuck do I make 15 minutes of buffer? There's no. Yeah. Do you want to go till midnight? Because that's how we go to midnight. Yeah. <laughs> now what we did with Permit Ethos, we did run tracks. Yeah. But we had every presenter present twice, the ah, same thing. Smart. So if you chose B, you'd get another chance for A later. Mm-hmm. Very cool. That was harder on presenters though, like. If you're presenting a technical presentation, it's not hard. When you're doing something inspirational, right, and you're laying it out, and they're like, "Okay, do it again," you're like, "Uh, no, I, I, I can't." You know what I mean? Like maybe <laughs> tomorrow. That. Yeah, no. But like when you really, anybody's ever presented it and has ever done that, where you really yeah. hammer it and you give everything you've got. Okay, I just did that. I, I, so I gave everything I got. So now I got nothing. And I need a break, you know. Do it again. Oh, it's like Do when you forget tomorrow, to press record. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh. And it won't be the same, but it could still be good. It's never I the need- same. That's the thing. It, it's not going to be the same. Like I was giving a presentation once and the videographer had not hit record. And they're like, go back and do that again. Like interrupted my presentation. Then and I was like, I started and I was it. like, no. The people who buy the video are just going to miss that part. And I went on because it was like, that's not going to ever happen that way again. No, it's not. I'm not reading a script here. Right. No, that happened to me when I was on Glenn Beck's show. Yeah. And they put the fucking microphone on upside down. (laughs) And I'm like, we're not hearing Jack. I'm like, what the fuck? And I look, I'm like, well, you're fucking retards. Like you put the microphone. And the guy's like, I did not put the microphone on, on you upside down. I'm like, <laughs> he goes, oh fuck! And like, <laughs> and like, well, say that the same way again. Like, uh, I, I, no, I, I, I don't know what I said. So the double presenting is okay, but it's not. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. How do you do something that big and not do tracks? Is what I'm saying. You might need to do tracks. Yeah, uh, like it's that's, like that's music the festivals. There's bands yeah. on at the same time, right? You gotta not see X to see Y, because then it puts the true value of seeing the other person too, right? Because then you, yeah. you don't get to see the other one. But if you have somebody the scale of Joel Salatin, the keynote, and you don't have conflict, no, don't. I think that's the way to go. Like your really yeah. big speakers don't create the conflict, and then yeah. when you do have the conflict, go don't do. This dude's talking about raising chickens on paddocks, and this dude's talking about raising pigs on paddocks. Right, right. right. Like, 
Have somebody talk about like raising chickens on paddocks and somebody talking about like um, alternative construction methods. Yeah, no, you have livestock track and you have marketing track. On the same like, day. On the same right. day. Yeah. Totally different things. Yeah. Instead of uh, having a permaculture event, everybody's talking permaculture and everybody's opposite, opposite everybody. You got Jean-Paul Fortier, Jack Spirico and fucking Greg Judy opposite yeah. each other. And you're like, I hate I don't my know life what to now. do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I'd go listen that. to Greg instead of me, but that's not what I hear. So ever. masterminding how to make the goose get together the best ever, because we'll give it enough time to make this as creative as possible at the lowest cost to bring the most amount of people together. Leave me alone fest. Leave me alone fest. <laughs> Leave me alone fest. Leave us alone. The guy who just who built my roaster. Yeah, we, we we talked about politics. He's like, I don't know. I just want everybody to leave me alone. <laughs> I was like, you're one of us. We got a sticker yeah. for you. <laughs> the difference between leave me alone and leave us alone is we're not alone. We just want to be left alone. Right. Right. Leave us alone. I like that. Leave me alone is a little more isolating. We're ants or geese. We have a flock. Like we're not saying we want to be alone. We just want like we got our thing. Yeah. Stay the fuck away, or the necks are coming out, and you're getting bit. <laughs> that's why i like ants too like that's why i always did the ant story when i started survival podcast it's like fire ants don't give a fuck they build a nest and they don't they don't actually bother you they leave you that's alone you step on them. they do their shit you step in their nest you fuck with their kids and they bite the fuck out of you and make you wish you were never born like that's that's the gaggle that's what we are we're like we're peaceful you know until you mess with our goslings and then you gotta get bit <laughs> So uh, leave us alone 2023. Leave us alone 2023. Now we like need it. artwork. Hey, uh, artists out there. Uh, leave us what? alone a polco. <laughs> Wait a minute. Polko. That might be. That might be. <laughs> Trademark infringement. They said they don't yeah. care. That they're all for anarcho capitalism. Oh, and we're not going to, you know what? We will not be a direct competitor. Absolutely. Because I, I don't know anything about this yet, but I know when we won't do it. We won't do it in fucking February. We will not do it in February. There's the whole bunch of times we can debate. Like, that's too hot. That's too cold. Whatever. But February's like, no. February's fuck off the list, 100%. No. Yeah. No. So no somebody February. think of a cool logo for the Goose Group. There's ours for uh, the Spring Fest for this year. Just got released. So oh. artists. Where's the audience the most dense? Ooh. Tennessee and Texas. True. So that, uh, that's, that's, the, that's where we're most dense is the crossover between me and the call mm -hmm. Tennessee, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, that old and Florida. We have a huge following in Florida. Florida's yeah. warm and fun. Florida's warm and fun. It's a good place for a tax deductible vacation. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to share my Island with you guys. In Florida. No, not, okay. not you, you guys, but not all. Yeah, you guys yeah we got it. If the you put it in the Tampa, St. Peter, Orlando area, you got stuff for families to do when they're not at our festival. They're at, so much other stuff for families to do. My Back when I was in the evil corporatism world, we had a big uh, uh, group called Bixie, and like all the companies were members of Bixie, and we did our winter conference in Orlando for exactly that reason. Because everybody brings everybody, yeah. And you fly in with your kids and all, and you write everything off. But I don't want to do winter. Winter's hard to leave for homesteads. That's the problem because if it's that one time that the, the thing freezes and then the pond through, drains like, and then everything dies. Lost, I lost two participants because they had whiteout conditions and couldn't drive. Yeah, down. but yeah, that's I, I was like, that's works. fair enough. There's no way you're going to be driving through that thing, right? Well, so. Jack's late September works for that because late September, not early like early fall or yeah. early summer, I yeah, think yeah, is yeah. your. Your two Mine, opportunities. Mm -hmm. You know where else is cool, Nicole? Not that far from you, Gallenberg. Gallenberg is cool. Gallenberg is cool. We could all get drunk. What airport? The distilleries. That's like, you fly into Knoxville or so, Nashville. Yeah. Even or Nashville, Nashville and drive bad. further, but yeah, it's not yeah, actually it's not that, that far from Nashville, but expensive. It's just so for some it's easier to get to Nashville. Knoxville is a better airport for it. But like when we were there, we got up at we got up at like six in the morning. Because we ended up there during fall break, which I didn't know was a thing until we ended up there, and everybody diverted there because of a hurricane. And like, what are all these people doing here? It's fall break. What the fuck is fall break? 
I never had fall break. Yeah, there's Apparently fall break thing. in October. But we're like, okay, there's all these people here, and there's all these people here with their kids. So, like, if we get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, the kids are not – like, if you're traveling with kids, you're not up and moving by 6. So we'd go in the forest, and we'd do, like, a hike, like a four- or five-mile hike, and we would be done at, like, 11. Like, the kids are just going into the woods. And then we'd come back, take a shower, and then we'd go out and hang out through town, and we'd listen to music, and we went to the uh, – the Moonshine Distilleries. So we'd find a restaurant. We'd listen to some live music. We'd drink some beers. Go to the Moonshine Distilleries. It's a cool town. That's another option. Lots of lodging. Lots of Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. You could ride a ski lift with your mask on if you're scared. You know. <laughs> you can go to Uber Gotlandberg. Yeah. Get fake German food. It's not Pigeon German Pigeon Forge at all. is right there. Dollywood's right there. I've never been to Dollywood, but I did go to over over Gatlinburg yeah. and buy some bratwurst and notwurst, and I was totally disappointed with it. But the beer was good. Beer that's was all good. that's important, Jack. That's what's important. Zone six is great. We're gonna have to figure this out. We don't have yeah. any idea. We no don't. Idea. Adam <laughs> says zone six is great in September. Well, that narrows it the fuck down. All right, like eighty percent of the country. Telegram and keep duking this out. Come on, people, stir it up. Y'all gotta. You know what? That's the thing. Instead of figuring out a venue, we've got enough audience here. Yeah. You compete to make us your venue. How yeah, well, sweet can you make the pot to make all the geese fly in to your yeah, location? Yeah, who's got the coolest spot? Who's Who got 300 acres and you, you, you want during this workshop for a pond to be put in? Yeah, because at that scale, you could get some earthworks done. And and when when Nicole lands or I land, is a, is a limo coming to pick us up, or at least a big pickup truck? You know, Brian, you could send an Uber like a little golf. How about a smart car? A tuk -tuk. Nicole and I, you know, and my wife and whatever, we gotta like, you gotta take care of us. Like, who wants who wants to do this? Who wants to, you know? Mike says he's got 50 acres, right? Well, you know. Oh, ah, we're getting there close now. The, the, the bidding has begun. Mm -hmm. UTG 23. UTG 23 kind of like, rhymes. One of the things I've learned in watching people do events is if you're doing 50 to 100, you can do the same place every year. You want to do something big? These people have like two big events every year, and they do two venues every year, the same place every year. You wear out the local traffic. Yeah. You got to move it around. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be like the Olympics. Chicago's everybody awesome bids right on where Goose Fest happens. Come on, Chicago! I'm rooting for you. Because, <laughs> like Nicole, like I'm saying, we go beyond the goose, right? We right. go beyond the gaggle, right? John, yeah, you guys, right? Jesus. We're bringing my boys with for, uh, Fortress Defense, or we bring in uh, the guys with what the hell are uh, uh, with oh. the Warlock system? Like all these different people we have. Yeah. Pete, he knows some people. Somebody's got a place. Who we, we got, got it? Like y'all got to fight. Y'all got to want it. You want uh, Goose Fest? You know we deliver, but the 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 extended flock is what needs to make it happen. It's if you could true. chopper to the festival grounds, that would be. Hmm, you might festival win with festival grounds. Festival grounds. Who will have the sacred festival grounds this year? You know, like you got Beijing and Salt Lake fighting over who gets the Olympics. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got to get a little, a little more competition yeah. going. Yeah, a little standoff. Why are we trying to figure this out? We I don't know. Do. Yeah, set it loose. UTG twenty three. Unloose the goose. I'm gonna make sure. <laughs> Unloose the goose fest. Unloose the goose fest. Fight, fight for the venue. Fight, fight for freedom. Make some dough. It could be giant. Be a festival coordinator. You know, if you want geese to come to your farm, write a proposal. Like you want to have goose hunters come shoot geese. You got to plant some shit. You got to make some. You got to make some ponds. You got to put in some sloughs. You got to make it attractive so the geese will come. You want us to come. You got to put some decoys out. Bring us in. Like <laughs> decoys, like fifty cows. You know, the That'll attractive, feminine-looking geese don't work for all of us. I'm just saying. No, no. <laughs> Some need the ganders with the flipping wings. They just flip in the wings. And yeah. Like, I'm a gander. 
right? Like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta give us a reason. I think that's the plan. Uh, I do think. That's I think plan. we're done. I do too. <laughs> Boom. That is perfect. Brandon says, "Let's real quick." Brandon says, "I wish I had enough land." Maybe you Brandon, can. you need to ask yourself the magic question: magic. How can I have access to enough land for the event? For how the can to come I? To you don't can even have to own the land. You for need two weeks access to land for a period of time. Put the whole festival together, take the money, and it all dissolves back to the ether. How can I? How the magic can person. I? The magic words. Look Preach, brother. Yeah. You'd be surprised what you could rent. All right, Brian, we've signaled you since you're in charge tonight. It's oh, time to shut I don't it have, uh, uh, John, John Bush was running it. Um, Oh, yeah, yeah, we I can end the broadcast. Just give us the closing words. Oh, 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 me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Everybody have a great week. It's the geese. Go piss off the government in some way. If you saw all my posts, my idea was to uh, take money out of the ATMs at noon in whichever jurisdiction you were. So it would show like a heartbeat on their fucking screens that they have to look at every day just to flip them off hey so if you anyway. haven't connected with us go to unloosethegoose.com and connect with us on social we got a telegram and a mewe group let's get this going telegram and everybody leave with a mighty honk, honk. honk.